Halli hello! I'm Refashionista Cherry and welcome to yet another exciting DIY in my 30 days of refashions. Today we're gonna do something with this totally awesome vintage maxi dress. Now this is clearly you know those kind of bridesmaid style maxi dresses which I have actually refashioned one of these before. I shall link that tutorial down below for you guys. But today, I mean, it's, you can tell it's a, it's a little bit tight in the chestal area here. So we got to deal with that. And I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with it yet. Uh, maybe a romper. I want to add sleeves for sure. But you know what? Let's take it into the studio and start chopping. <laughs> For this fast yet fancy project, all you need is your super long dress and your sewing gear. So the very first thing I'm going to do is chop the dress to the length that I would like my finished top to be, plus a couple of centimeters of seam allowance. Now I have already put this on inside out and I know that just below the zipper is going to be absolutely perfect. So here's a few quick and easy tips so you can get the general idea of when a vintage garment may have been made. First of all, you'll want to check the label and pretty much just from how this label looks here, we can figure out that this is for sure the 70s, if not earlier. So we have the lot number, we have the size, and it's just kind of stamped on there. Then, here's the big clue here. This is the Ladies Garment Workers Union label, and that again shows us that this is 1969 to early 1970s. And look, it was made in the USA. Also, if we check, it does have care instructions, but they are only in English. And these did not start being put into garments until the early 1970s, and they were, of course, only in English if your garment was made in an English-speaking country. Also here, I mean, this is 100% polyester, so there's no way this is not a 1970s beauty. Plus, if we look at the seams, the interior seams here, they are simply finished with a tight wide zigzag. They are not serged, which again tells us that this was definitely made before sergers became readily available to the general public, as well as being used all the time in garment factories. So I'm going to say this is definitely late 60s to early 70s. Another clue is this lovely metal zipper because metal zippers were used up until about the mid 70s when plastic zippers became available everywhere. So this is lovely but it is a bit too tight so I do have to upsize it just a bit and it looks like that I'm going to have more than enough space here. I can just move this seam a little bit further out and then I should gain about a centimeter or maybe even two on the sides which will be more than enough. So all I'm going to do is unpick the sides. I mean wow that's coming off very easy <laughs> already uh, but yeah I'm just going to unpick these and then restitch them together giving myself that little bit of extra space that I need. So I have my interior side seams redone and you can see pretty much exactly how much I'm gaining. So, you know, that's like a centimeter there, a centimeter there. So in total, I'd say it's about three and a half centimeters. So that should be more than enough. And my stitch is here. And then I did also go ahead and do a zigzag right along the edge to help prevent fraying. So you can see here on either side are the holes from the original stitches. Now, most of the time, simply washing the garment in like a warm water wash will close up these holes. I'm not sure if it's going to do much with this one because it is so old and it is a polyester fabric, but I will definitely <laughs> be trying that. Um, um, so that's just a quick tip if you if you do have these kind of ghost holes from a previous stitch try washing in warm water and hopefully it will help to close them up enough that they're not so noticeable anymore. 
as I was stitching, I did also go ahead and hem up the bottom. And I'm not sure if I like it because it came out pretty bulky. So I may be chopping it off and then using some cool vintage lace or something else to bind up the raw edge. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So now we can finally move on to creating the awesome statement sleeves. Now this, of course, is the chopped bottom, so the skirt part of that maxi dress, and it's actually in uh, four pieces that were sewn together. So one, two, three, four. So all I'm going to do is leave the side seams as they are, but I'm going to pick it apart here at the front seam and at the back seam, which will then give me my two sleeve pieces. So now let's move on to making our cool statement sleeves. Now the very first thing I'm going to do is measure my armhole size so I know how, you know, wide I can make my sleeves. So here's about, say, from the shoulder, 22 centimeters, so 44 centimeters because we need a front and a back, and I'll add a centimeter for seam allowance, so 45 centimeters. So to get the length measurement for my first sleeve piece, I simply measured from the top of my shoulder down to about my mid elbow, uh, because that's where I would like my kind of bigger statement bell to start. And that was about 32 centimeters. So I have one of my chopped skirt halves laid flat here and folded in half evenly. So I'm going to take my width measurement here and let's do was 22 and a half. And then I'm going to take my length measurement, which was about 32 and whoop, you cannot see that <laughs> and pop a pin at about say 33 then just for for safety and again nothing i do is ever 100 percent meticulously measured this is all just for basic cutting right now and uh, yeah then i'm gonna go chop it to size once I had one of my sleeve tops chopped out, I then used it as a template to chop out the other one, and then I stitched them both into tubes to create la la, my amazing sleeve tops. So one side will go in to the armholes and be stitched on, and then the other side is going to have the cool statement bell coming off of it. And I also went ahead and did my lovely bells here for the bottom of my statement sleeves. And to get the right length, all I did was to pop on the top of the sleeves over my arm, kind of arranging it at my shoulder. And then I put this bottom part of the skirt on the arm and simply kind of eyeballed it to get the right length and then chopped it to size and sewed them into tubes. Okay, so let's put these together. So I have my bottom part, the bell part is inside out and the top of the sleeve is right side out and I'm just going to put that top of the sleeve inside the bell. Now because both of these pieces do have side seams, that's what I'm going to use to initially line up just so it, you know, the side seams are going to be aligned if nothing else. <laughs> Okay, now clearly this is much too big to just simply fit on this, but this is what we want. We want to be able to have some nice little pin tucks here, and so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to fold my fabric like so, and pin it in place, and then do the next one. And again, if you want these to be super even and equal, by all means, go ahead, use your measurements. I don't really care. Um, I think I've gotten pretty good at eyeballing by now, <laughs> and things things come out come out pretty darn awesome in my opinion. So I'm gonna go finish this up and then stitch them together. Okay, it is all stitched together. Now let's do the moment of truth and flip it right side out, and. <gasps> Okay, this absolutely worked. Uh, wow, wow. Um, 
Look at that beautiful bell, beautiful sleeve. Wowza. Okay, let's go do the other one and then stitch them on the dress. If you've been following me for a while, then you should already know how I attach sleeves. But for those who maybe are new here, welcome. And uh, I'll show you how I do it. So we have our top inside out and the sleeves right side out. And now all I'm going to do is put the sleeve inside the armhole and you see when they are stitched together the right sides will be facing. So we got to get everything lined up and again this is where using those kind of side seams comes in handy because you can line up the underarm seam with a side seam as well as up top here the shoulder seam with a side seam and then just go stitch it together. Okay, the sleeves are now both stitched on, so let's flip it right side out. Uh, wowza. I mean, this definitely, I'm, let's just go put it on right now and style it up. <laughs> you guys, holy shit, you guys. Seriously, this definitely calls for a holy shit. This is a holy shit moment if there ever was a holy moment, am I right? Because, I mean, hello, I can't, I seriously, sometimes I'm so proud of my own brain, <laughs> you know, for figuring stuff out because this is amazing. And again, now one of my totally new favorite things for sure. <laughs> and this tutorial will so come in handy for so many different occasions. You know, you could make a festive one with like a red top and giant doilies or tablecloths as, as the sleeves. You could, I mean, of course, for Halloween or any kind of spooktacular type of costume, this is wonderful. Or if you have a goth in your life, perhaps they would truly enjoy this or someone who absolutely adores Stevie Nicks style, you know, like yours truly, you want to make me one, I am more than happy <laughs> to receive your wonderful makes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, again, wowza, wowza, let me know down below if you are as impressed as I am with this result because it is just beautiful. Oh, and also with the bottom part here, I did end up just chopping it off because it really was too chunky but I don't have enough black lace in my stash, so I'm going to have to, uh, you know, finish off the bottom at a later date. But it's okay, because this fabric doesn't fray at all. So when I find some cool black vintage lace, I shall, I'll finish it at that time. <laughs> but again, as always, take a scroll through my channel, visit the 30 Days of Refashions uh, tutorial list, which is right at the top there. What else? Go to refashionistasherry.com because you know everything's over there and i'm definitely out of breath now that's a lot of talking that i do <laughs> all in one breath <laughs> um, so um yeah uh i'm again so excited about this my train of thought is going away so until tomorrow stay safe stay well and i'll catch ya on the zigzag This is Confessions of a Refashionista.